Hello and welcome back to another episode of the weekly news on the For the Property Investor podcast. And of course, we have Nick Bendel here who is bringing the news and um, uh, you're coming from a slightly different location again today, Nick. I am indeed. Normally, I broadcast from my home in Sydney, but today I'm in a very fancy hotel room in Melbourne. Wow. Wow. And uh, and um, hope Melbourne has been treating you well. Melbourne has been really nice. I got here three days ago, had a very nice weekend. The weather has been pleasant and I've seen some friends. I've done some work. Had a couple of nice dinners. It's been a very nice visit. Fantastic. Good to hear. And um, it's uh, what's been happening in your week for the past week? Well, I, I've had a really good week, Owen. I am the owner of Hunter and Scribe, which is a copywriting agency that writes content for finance and property professionals throughout Australia. And our biggest uh, client group is mortgage brokers. And so during the week, last week, I went along to National Finance Brokers Day in Sydney, which was a really, really good day. The room was full of my people, mortgage brokers who I love, quite a few clients in the room, and uh, also spoke to a few of the lenders, and just a, a really, really good day. I, I always enjoy mixing with my broker people. Fantastic. Good to hear. As a, as a former mortgage broker myself, it's... Um, um, uh, Glad to hear that um, they're your favourite people. Yeah, and uh, there was a really interesting panel discussion between Mark Boris and James Simon, who were talking about their former fierce rivalry when Simon was at Aussie and Boris was at Wizard, and yeah. how they <laughs> uh, they were not too fond of each other back then, uh, but now they're mates. Oh well, that's nice to hear that after all that time, they're they're um, they consider themselves mates now. That um, um, yes, I mean that would would have, would have been over twenty years ago now that they uh, had Aussie and um, Wizard going. So uh, that would have been an interesting conversation. It was. And any news from you and Lee Field over the past week? Oh, just uh, dealing with lots of good problems of um, of um, having lots of new business coming in and um, having to uh, manage the growth and hiring new staff and all of these fun things of running a uh, a fast growing business. So, um, um, but stay tuned. Lots of good things happening and. Um, we will give you updates as they happen. Well, congratulations. Glad to hear the business continues to grow. And you're in five states now, aren't you? Yep, five states. And um, uh, the original three, uh, well, the original two uh, are still growing well with uh, New South Wales and Queensland, especially Queensland. Um, but WA is a strong performer. Um, but our, our, uh, maybe while you're in Melbourne, can you drum up some more business there? Because Melbourne's not, uh, uh, hasn't been the greatest of performer of, over the years. Uh, but um, but word on the street, if I can give you a little little tip, word on the street is um, it might not be a hot spot just yet, but, um, but uh, apparently Melbourne is warming up quite a bit. Mm. Well, I wouldn't be surprised because it has underperformed for a few years and therefore I wouldn't be surprised if investor money starts moving from some of the markets that have been booming to others that might have more growth potential. Yes, but apparently you have to be pretty picky. So um, if um, so, good idea to talk to a, a knowledgeable, in-the-know buyer's agent. That sounds like a very good plan. And I think you are really going to enjoy the three news stories we have oh, really? to present today, Owen. I think you're going to enjoy That's them. That's right. And you're bringing the news. We're not just having a chat, are we? No, we're not. And I wouldn't be surprised if during these news stories you let loose on a rant or two. Oh, no, I don't like to do those sorts of things, do I, Nick? You have got a bit of a reputation for that. Oh, okay. Maybe you're just baiting me now. <laughs> On purpose. 
Well, you know, you know me too well. Let's move into the first story where yes, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to bait you. All property right. property market delivers best profit result in over a decade. The overwhelming majority of vendors who sold their home during the 2023-24 financial year achieved a higher price than their original purchase price. Domain research found that 96% of house vendors throughout Australia enjoyed a gross profit, the highest since 2008, and 90.7% of unit vendors made a profit, the highest since 2011. A higher share of regional vendors achieved profits than capital city vendors for both houses, 96.1% versus 96%, and units, 94.6% versus 89.4%. Owen, what are your thoughts when you hear about this data showing that the overwhelming majority of people who buy a property eventually sell it for a gross profit? Oh, well, it's not really surprising at this point in time. Uh, if you look at the last 10 years in, in most of the major markets around the country, uh, there's been tremendous growth. Uh, and then you look at the, the low stock levels uh, that um ha have been selling it's it's only the people who have um are in a position where um they can sell and make a profit uh with, with the few exceptions of course um who are on the market and and looking to sell and they said they'd be selling for a reason so um yeah not, not really too surprising so domain found that during the 2023 24 uh financial year house vendors were more likely to make a profit than unit vendors. Does that surprise you? No, again, it, it's uh, generally houses do grow uh, faster. And, and during uh, the first couple of years of COVID, um, units definitely took a big hit. And um, we, with a, a lack of growth compared to their house cousins and it's uh, so yes, that that's not really surprising. And Domain also found that regional vendors were more likely to enjoy a profit than capital city vendors. Did that surprise you? Um, no, no, no real surprises here, Nick. It's um, um, yeah. It, it, again, during the COVID years, uh, regional areas did uh, get quite a a boom from um, people doing the tree change and sea change. And um, so, so no real surprise. Even though in the the last year or two, the the regions have um, maybe uh, leveled off, um, depending on 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 which areas, of course. Um, some regional areas have have boomed quite dramatically. Um, so in the last year or two, so yeah, that again, no real surprise. So I, I guess the data seems to show if you buy a quality property in a quality location. Hold it for the long term. History suggests you're going to make a handsome profit. Yes, and it's it's not about timing the market. It's about time mm -hmm. in the market. Yes. I like that. that that old saying. Yeah, but it is true. It's one I yeah. I I live by, and I think it, it applies to the stock market as well. If you're buying a broad based mm -hmm. index fund, time in the market rather than timing the market. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, no rant so far, but let's see if I can tempt you with our second story, which mm. is the Greens say the great Australian housing dream is dead. The Greens have released new research based on parliamentary library analysis of ATO, RBA and CoreLogic data that shows none of the 10 most common professions in Australia can afford to buy a house and avoid housing stress. Those Professions include primary school teachers, nurses, and sales assistants. So the Greens have called for a two-year freeze on rent increases, followed by an ongoing cap on rent increases, the removal of negative gearing and capital gains tax concessions for property investors, and the establishment of a public property developer to build 710,000 homes over the next 10 years, with rents capped at 25% of a tenant's income, and homes sold just above the cost of construction. The Greens housing spokesperson, Max chandler Mather says, for far too many, the Australian dream of owning a home is dead and it's been killed by Labor and the Liberals with tax handouts to property investors. Since Howard introduced the capital gains tax discount in 2000, house prices have surged ahead of wages, 
locking out millions of people from home home ownership. So when Max Chandler Mather says, for far too many, the Australian dream of owning a home is dead. Is he right? Um, if you think it, that is the case, then yes. Um, do you think it's the case? No, well, well, for, for those individuals who are struggling, if they think it, it is dead, then yes, that is the case. Um, but for, for everyone else who um, wants to make it happen, it can happen. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's a different time to 30 years ago. Um, yeah, you, you have to adapt and change. So um, the world does not stay the same. Economies don't stay the same. Societies don't stay, stay the same. So it, you, you can't expect things to stay the same. And uh, so you, you need to adapt and change. So it's uh, so to, to answer the question directly, no, it's not dead if you uh, are persistent and you really want to make it happen. What what about uh, so so the Greens were making the point that if you're in one of those ten most common professions and they mentioned primary school teachers, nurses, and sales assistants, you can't afford to buy a house and avoid housing stress. In other words, the repayments would occupy an excessive amount of your monthly income. For for those people, Owen, do you think the Australian dream of owning a home is dead? No, they have options. It's, yes, it, if they want to put themselves in a box of, of this is our only option that we want, then uh, then that's just um, unrealistic these days. So they have options. They can rent, rent vest. Uh, if they need to live in Sydney, it's cheaper to rent where they need to live than it will to buy that house. Mm. So they can still get in the housing market, though by renting where they need to live and buying a property for investment. Thousands of people do it. Now, speaking of property investment, what do you think of the Greens' proposal to remove negative gearing and capital gains tax concessions for investors? Uh, what, what are they trying to achieve by doing that? It's like they're just trying to punish someone uh, punish a section of the community that, that is providing housing to the population. And by trying to punish them, um, it's it's just going to make the problem worse. Rents will go up. Uh, it, it, it'll be ridiculous. Um, so it, all they're focused on is trying to create Band-Aid solutions without fixing the cause of the issue. Hmm. Well, funny you should mention that rents are going to go up because that leads to another one of their proposals, which I'm sure you'll agree with, which is the Greens' proposal to freeze rents for two years and to then impose ongoing rent controls. Are you a big fan of those ideas? No, Nick. <laughs> um, because that, that'll just make the the scarcity of properties even worse. Uh, people will sell because they've got mortgages to pay with uh, increasing interest rates. And if the uh, market rate cannot be allowed to set itself, now that's whether the market rate goes up and down based on supply and demand. So if the market rate can't set itself, then we're going to have a false economy. And when you have a false economy, people um, it's not stable and people aren't confident in it. So they will move to other forms of investment. Hmm. What about another thing that the Greens proposed, which was to create a public property developer that builds lots of homes and then sells or rent them, sells or rents them at controlled prices. What, what do you think of that idea? Oh, well, it says, uh... The Greens are going into going to go into the business of property development now, are they? It, it's um, uh, you know, uh, let's take bets of how quick they'll go broke. Um, 
yeah, it's so what what was it? They're going to set um, um, uh, set the costs at just above construction costs. Yeah, it, yes. it's uh, well, well, ask a lot of developers. There's a lot of developers out there um, that have tried that and they've gone broke. And it's um, so the, the Greens just don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> OK, uh, do you think I succeeded in triggering you with with that uh, new story? Oh, it's just like uh, there's, there's just yeah. Why why are we giving giving them uh, why why are we giving them validation by talking about them? Yeah, it, it's it's just ridiculous. Okay, well let's do our final story. Not for profit group calls for Airbnb reform. Grounded community land trust advocacy has studied the impact of Airbnb in cities around the world, including Sydney and found that it's making rents more expensive for local residents. According to Grounded Community Land Trust Advocacy, Airbnb investor returns in Sydney exceed traditional property investor returns by 92.3%. Grounded Community Land Trust Advocacy said this is making it harder for making it hard for local residents to find stable and affordable housing. As a result, it's proposing a cap and trade system. You force Airbnb landlords to get licenses, you limit the number of licenses, and you then reduce the number of licenses to force pro properties back into the traditional rental market. Oh, and we've got no way of knowing whether the numbers quoted by this group are correct, but I'm wondering, do you agree with their basic argument that the rise of short-term rentals is distorting the traditional rental market and making it harder for locals to find stable, affordable housing? Actually, during a a time where we've got a undersupply of rental properties and we've got rents increasing at a dramatically high pace, um, as a short-term solution, I don't think this is a bad one. So it's um, even though I, I do believe in the right of people to be able to um, use their properties as they want um it's and there's obviously demand out there for short-term rent, rental accommodation but when we've got people who can afford to rent living you know being homeless because they can't afford to then um i i, I actually don't think this is a, a a necessarily a bad idea whether it's for a short term and um, basis or, or not, then yeah, it's um, not a bad idea. Hmm. Well, so they've proposed a cap and, and trade system. And without going into the specifics of, of what they're proposing, what do you think of the idea of forcing short term landlords to get licenses and then limiting the number of those licenses? Yes, well, that, that will. Um, um, Put the the costs up for doing short term rental, um, which will make it more difficult for people to um, um, to continue to 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 do that um, to lease lease out their properties on the short term rental market, uh, and, it, and it might also make the affordability between Airbnbs and um, hotel accommodation more equal. So people might start to decide, well, I'll, I'll just stay in a hotel room instead. Um, but we, we don't want to ban it altogether. We still want people to have choice. And But the, the, the limiting um, by way of licensing, I don't think is necessarily a, a, a bad idea, especially in the short term, because then you can, you can increase the number of licenses in the future quite easily um as as markets open up hmm. okay well interesting thoughts uh three interesting stories and appreciate as always your insights thanks nick and um y yes um I, I might have surprised you there with, with one or two of those answers but um uh yes the 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 greens are the Greens always have good intentions. Um, don't get me wrong. 
I understand that their intentions are good, um, but uh, yeah, they they just don't understand um, how to go about uh, fixing these issues, and they they always look at the band aid solutions, and they're just trying to blame other people instead of taking responsibility and taking the correct action that needs to be done. So yeah, uh, that's my little summary. Well, really enjoy the chat, Owen, and looking forward to seeing you next week. You too, Nick, as always. We'll see you next week with the news.